knowledge, to know the unknowable, to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Uh, I had a picture, and I don't think I, I think I forgot to put it in here, and that's okay. Um, when Sally and I, back when we traveled, we were in Stratford, Texas. Anybody know where Stratford, Texas is? You, if you know where Stratford, Texas is, you must have had an appointment there. Um, so anyway, Stratford, Texas is in a panhandle of Texas, and as most people from Texas will tell you, they don't talk about the panhandle much because they don't really think it's part of Texas, right? Basically, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of just... It's kind of uh, right Oklahoma. So anyway, um, but as we were getting ready to go there, all the years we traveled, we mostly had good experiences. We had a few bad experiences, and all of the bad experiences we had, well, most of the bad experiences we had were when people would say, well, you could just stay with this family from our church or from our homeschool group or whatever. <sighs> so anyways, um, the guy said, you know, the closest, the, the, the only thing really in Stratford, Texas, are cattle cattle yards, which if you've ever driven by one, they don't smell that great because it's like six billion cows all in the same acre, right? They have one job and that's to get bigger so they can send them to market. And uh, one of the guys uh, said something, hey, did you drive past the cattle yard? Yeah. He goes, you know what that smell is? I said, no. He goes, that's money. It's like, well, that's not what it smelled like, but okay. So anyways, they said, you can stay in a little hotel. It's like 15, 20 minutes, 20 miles down the road, but it's not very nice. But if you want, B.A. and Lil Rain, uh, Lee Rain have just built a house, and it's a very nice house. You should stay there. Okay, well, B.A. and Lee Rain, Lee Rain they, were, uh, they were from Stratford, Texas. He was a banker, but he was also a cattle guy, okay, which I know everybody in Texas says they're a cattle guy, but he actually was a cattle guy. And so we pull up to their house, you know, fingers crossed. I'm thinking, oh, please, Jesus, please let this be good, because if it's not, I'm going to hear about this. So, so we pull in, and it's like, it's like 10 times nicer than our house. They live upstairs, but then they have this downstairs thing. I mean, it was two bedroom, uh, two bath, full kitchen. Uh, it had these, these uh, bed bu uh, bunk beds built into the wall. It was awesome. And they were, they treated us good. They fed us. He even let me sit in his jacuzzi, you know, at night watching the little tree, the little, uh, uh, what, what kind of trees are those they have? Mesquite tree. Yeah. It was full grown. It was about that tall. And, and so it was awesome, but it got better because as I was leaving, BA said, Hey Mike, uh, take your motor home around the corner there next to the barn. You'll see my fuel tank and fill her up. And I pulled around, and there's this huge tank. You know, like I could fill my tank on my, on my motorhome. I could fill it four, five, six, seven, I don't know how many times. I was supposed to fill up my tank according to his fullness of fuel. I couldn't take all that he had. We are supposed to live full according to his fullness. Guess what his fullness is? Beyond what we can think ask or imagine. So his prayer and my prayer for you and your prayer for yourself should be to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that I may be filled up to all the fullness of God. I just want to be a little full. No, I want to be full according to his fullness. Verse 20 and 21 says this, and it finishes up this, this, this prayer. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we can ask or think, according to the power that works within me, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I love to play the lottery. Dot, 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 game. Dot, 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 in my head. Okay. I've never actually played the lottery. Somebody gave me a lottery ticket one time. I didn't know what to do with it. Um, I know my favorite part of any MAPCO experience is when I'm standing behind somebody who's decided they are going to play lottery as a career all day and stand there, you know, and whatever. But, but I, I, what I like to do is I like to see, oh, $105 million. Okay, well, after taxes, I'll have $50 million. And what am I going to do? I have bought every one of you in here cars. I've bought you houses. I have bought you chickens. I've bought you dogs. I've just bought you amazing things. Trust me, there's nobody in here I've not bought something for. I love that game. 
I have a pretty good imagination. But it says that it's beyond what I can think or ask. Now, how many of y'all can think some pretty good stuff, some pretty big stuff? Did you know that he wants to give beyond what we can think? And here's the other thing that I think is really important. Paul knows that what you think is not always what you ask. Well, I'm going to ask for, I'm thinking this, but I'm only going to ask for this. I'm going to think about this, but I'm only going to ask for this. Christians, I think, I think God wants our ask to be as big as our think. And don't say that real fast. That might come out wrong. <laughs> but he wants what we ask for to match what we're already thinking. And guess what? It's already going to be smaller than what he has for us. <laughs> Christian just got that. He's like, okay. Yeah. Later, later uh, we'll talk. So here's how I want to end the service today. I want to I pray a benediction over you. Now, if you've got, if you've got some needs and you want to see us after church, uh, we, would love to, we would love to pray, pray over you or just talk to you or whatever. But, but um, here's how, what I want to do. I just want to speak this spiritual, scriptural blessing over you. And I want to I ask that you would dwell on it this week, that you'd think back on it. Now, how are you going to think back on it? Mike, are you going to write it down? Is Kelly going to write it down and send it to us on an email? Although she's the person who would do that. You don't have to do that because it, it takes every scripture you are memorizing and it combines them into there. That's tricky on my part, right? It'll, it'll help you memorize the scripture. But here's what it is. Now, if you, if, first of all, I'm going to ask you just to, I don't usually do this, but just close, close your eyes. Why do we do this? So that all of a sudden you feel like, okay, I'm the only one in this room. Nobody's watching me. So whatever I do is going to be, it's going to be okay. It's just between me and the Lord. Even Mike has got his eyes closed right now. If you have need from the Lord, I just, I just want you to take the posture of a person who is receiving something. Maybe that's, maybe your hands are just out in your lap. Maybe they're up high. Maybe, maybe they're, they're extended far out because you need something big. Or maybe it's small and you're just, you just got the one, one or two hand, hands up there close to you. But I just want to ask that you would actually receive this. Because see, to have the, the love of Jesus Christ available to you, if you don't take it, it's worthless. And Jesus didn't come to make a worthless investment. He came to make an incredible, life-changing, eternity-changing blessing. You don't have to take it. But I'm, I'm asking you today to accept that love of Christ that's, that's beyond what we can even, uh, even imagine. So, so just receive this blessing. Church, in all your ways, submit to God. He will make your path straight. Know that you can do all things through Christ. He gives you strength. Don't let anyone look down on you because you're young, because you aren't what they want you to be, because you aren't living in their wisdom, but set an example for them in your speech, in your conduct in your love, in your faith, and even in your purity. And even though you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil because Jesus, the good shepherd, is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. And I pray for you to know his love. It surpasses knowledge. I pray that you will be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would minister to us each in the area that we need to be ministered in. You know, you know what our need is. You know where that wound is that only you can touch and only you can heal. You know where that, you, you know where that sickness, you know that, 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 that thing that we've not shared with anybody else. Holy Spirit, touch, heal, redeem, restore, reconcile. 
We know that you can do any of those things. You can do all those things. And you came so that you would do all those things. Help us to accept your love so that we can accept all that you have for us. Be with us this week. Bless us so that we can be a blessing to other people. Glorify yourself by meeting our needs, giving us the opportunity to tell people how great is our God. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share one last thing with you. As I was uh, driving Friday, I think it was, I was listening to a message, and then uh, I just, the, the song came to my mind. Uh, it's an old song. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. And it hit me. It's like, you know, not all, not all hymns are written by musicians. Many of, the, many of the lyrics were written by somebody else and then put to a tune. But I knew this, this person who wrote this song is a musician. And it never had clicked with me before that, that his request is, come thou found of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. You see, our hearts are not in tune. Our hearts are out of tune. Our hearts, our hearts have been, the tuning on our lives have, have been knocked out of whack. I mean, look, we got some guitars at my house that are pristine. We got a couple guitars at my house that they ain't never going to be tuned again. You don't want to play that. Church, allow the Holy Spirit to tune your heart. Because some of you, the tuning in your heart is off. Just enough to where when it's strummed and the grace of Jesus Christ comes in, it's like... Ask the Holy Spirit to tune, tune me so that I can get it. Tune my heart so that I can sing your grace. That was powerful to me this week, and I wanted to share it with you. So, God, thank you. Bless these people. They're awesome. Thank you for my new truck, the Pappy Wagon. It's awesome. You're good. You're kind. You're gracious. And you give beyond what we can think, ask, or imagine. And we take it because we want to glorify you. You're a good father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.